this branch is going straight through the crown. It's not, um, it's always going to be crossing. It's never going to, I mean, obviously, once it's out the other side, it's, it's, it's not the top of the side, but it's, it's stopping you getting the free flow of air through the crown. So, you want that out. So, again, a two stage cut. So, let's take the weight off first. And as you do your pruning, you also want to think how much of the crown you're taking out. You don't really want to take more than about a third of the crown. So that was the first cut. Now the second cut, as I said, we want to take it back to the, the main stem. And what you're looking for here is what's called the branch collar. <clears throat> and the branch collar is where the branch widens as it meets the stem. So <clears throat> it varies on tree to tree, species to species, but generally speaking, a branch will be fairly uniform and will flare as it reaches the stem. What you don't want to do is cut off that flare, because that is the point at which it's going to heal. That's where there's, there's going to be strong um, cambium growth to, to heal. And so <clears throat> what, what's talked about in terms of bad cuts is flush cuts. Where if you read an old pruning book, talk about flush cuts. Completely wrong, don't follow it. Because by creating a flush cut, you create too big a wound and you also take away the material, which is the best material for, 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 um, for wound, uh, creating wound wounds. And so ideally what we want is a, is a, is a nice small cut, which is going to heal over fairly quickly. So, on this tree, that's about there. It's quite hard to be really precise, other than on kind of classic branches where you can demonstrate. But if, you, if you look at that, I've cut it just as it's begun to flare, yeah? And so, I've not gone flush with the bark. Flush with the bark would have been down there, yeah? That would have been a flush cut, would have created a wound probably almost twice the size. This also is kind of going all over the place. Um, I mean, that, what's happened there is that that's got bent. Um, <laughs> So it's gone in the wrong direction. So again, two cuts, and this one is a bit tighter because it, it doesn't flare so much. So again, in that case, I can go very close because I'm not taking off a root flare, uh, a, a branch collar flare, but I'm still not right against the bar. There is still a, a, a gap. So just systematically repeating the very simple bits, just taking out these crossing branches. The way you've got these branches which are twisted, you want to work out what angle it actually goes onto the stem in. And that, that's the, the angle at which you want to prune it. Because you want that nice, tidy, small wound fairly close to the stem. Where you're pruning, you don't tend to want to leave horizontal upward wounds because water is so You may have not much choice ultimately, <coughs> but ideally a, a sloping wound. See what we want is we want light getting to these. This is where your fruit is. Fruit on plums tends to grow on one or two year old wood. So different uh, different varieties and different species produce the fruit on different bits of wood. Most fruit generally comes on one or two year old wood. It doesn't come on really old wood. So what you what the idea of pruning is to promote air and light to the fruit producing areas and also to promote growth of those pieces of wood that are going to produce fruit. You can also see on this there are some branches which have been pruned lower down and they've died back. That often happens if you prune a lower branch back. Usually if you're pruning a lower branch on a, on a slightly more mature, mature tree like this you want to take it back to the stem because it's just going to get shaded out and end up dying. The reason why we're pruning plants today, which you don't tend to prune in winter, is because of a series of diseases which plants and animals will get if they're pruned in winter. There's bacterial and fungal diseases which they're particularly prone to, and they're less prone to by doing it in, in, in uh, summer, partly because a lot of the fungal diseases like silver leaf aren't present in the summer, they sporulate in the autumn, so that, that's when they're present, but also because the primary defence that prunus cherries and plums have is 
gum. They produce a gummy substance. That's why you get gum poison from uh, cherries. That's why um, that's what rosin for violins is made from. Um, so by doing this, they should produce a certain amount of gummy exudation. So you should, don't worry if you've got gum coming out. That's the tree sealing the wound so and preventing any bacterial infection. Bear in mind which direction the bud is that you're pruning back to. That's the direction that the, 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 the branch is going to grow. So I've just pruned this back, but not all the way back. So you will almost always have a bud just beneath the leaf. So there's your leaf, and there's a bud just in the crux there. So if you prune back, well, let's, let's, let's use this one as an example. If I prune back, bearing in mind this is the tree, and I'm pruning that way, if I prune back to there, the tree will grow that way because that's the side that the bud is on. Yeah. If I prune back to there, it will grow that way. Yeah. Partly depends on light. It may start off going that way, but if the light's that way, it will move. But that—that's how you kind of get direction in in your pruning.